Greetings, Stamp Sleuths. Today we're investigating the stamps of the United States of America and the history they reveal. The United States is located here, Canada above, Mexico and South America below. Most colonies in what would become the United States were settled after 1600. By the 1760s, British colonies, colonies numbered into the 2.5 million population and they were mostly established along the eastern coast of the Appalachians. In 1776, in Philadelphia, the Second Continental Congress declared the independence of the colonies at, from Britain as the United States, and this was led by George Washington, which is pictured here in the two-cent stamp. The purchase of the Louisiana ter Territory in 1830, 1803 doubled the size of the United States. The first issue, Benjamin Franklin, was in 1847 under the general issues. This is a facsimile because I can't afford the real, the real thing. This is an issue of George Washington, again a facsimile, from 1851. The uh, United States, once it became a country, got involved in a lot of interesting things. I'll be discussing this. This is the uh, depiction of the 1932 Olympic Winter Games at Lake. Placid in New York, and again, Olympics in 1983. The United States uh, depicts a lot of its um, important historical events and or activities uh, in postage stamps or first day covers. This is the centenary of U.S. postage stamps, and it shows that the first issue was 1847, and this uh, was put out in 1947, so they actually show a facsimile of some of the first stamps issued in 1847. Uh, this is a first day cover for the 18th annual, annual convention and exhibition of the Philatelic Society in Oklahoma in 1950. And again, it's, it's kind of interesting because it shows um, a stamp that has a pictograph on it. This is an airmail uh, postal cover from 1942 from the U.S. and a later issue in 1947. The United States also pictured their important personages on their postal stamp. This is Amelia Earhart. It was issued in 1963. They took part in the World's Fair. This is the 1964 U.S. World's Fair, New York. Uh, first day cover. This is a, a, a cover from New York in 1963, again from a philatelic uh, exhibition. The United States does a lot of covers from their philatelic exhibition, and there are people that collect just those covers because, of course, it commemorates stamp collecting and uh, clubs in general. Uh, this cover here is uh, 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 one for the U U.S. Air Force Academy in Colorado and it's commemorating the historic first graduation in 1959. Other events uh, are, for example, the um, inauguration of President Kennedy in 1964. There are several issues uh, worldwide of Kennedy after the assassination uh, that are uh, morning covers or morning stamps surrounded in black. This is another Philatelic Association cover in 19... Uh, uh, 1996, I believe it was, um, and it's from Texas. Actually, it says 1948, Galveston, Texas. It's unaddressed, but it's not in the best condition. It's aged and spotty, but it's interesting. Another um, stamp collector cover. The United States really, really that goes out of its way to, uh, you know, c commemorate and uh, encourage stamp collecting, which I think is a good thing because it's informative and again. Uh, clubs abound. Uh, they also like to um, commemorate and uh, discuss their wildlife and how it's being conserved. This is World Wildlife Fund, and it's a set of first day covers. These are addressed first day covers, and they, this one shows uh, owls, and there's quite a, a variety of them. I don't know if this is two things together here. Oh, it's the card that goes, it has an insert that goes inside. I'll show you that too. This insert has the information on the specific owl. 
and each one of these covers has an insert like that. Again, these are first day covered covers. Those are addressed. United States gives, puts out Christmas issues. They didn't uh, as early as some other countries, but they do, and some countries don't, uh, but the U.S. does, and it's encouraged to be used on their Christmas mail, and they're quite festive. These are blocks, and this is a single. This is a more modern issue, 37 cent. They also um, put out issues that commemorate, for example, famous African-American individuals. This one's uh, mint, but it has a spot on it. This is another block, but the Black Heritage, uh, Philip Randolph. Again, as I uh, said earlier, the uh, United States really likes to promote stamp collecting, so they've actually issued a postage stamp uh, that actually uh, encourages and promotes stamp collecting. The United States also likes to put out unique issues. And in this particular case, these are fairly recent. They're round die cut. And as you can see, there's a bit of paper uh, adhered to them because they're really hard to soak off. And most people just uh, cut them out because you can't get the paper off. This is for global mail. In other words, these are good for any letter going outside of the United States. The United States also has a very rich history of entertainment and cinema. And this is commemorating some of their more memorable movies, The Wizard of Oz, Gone with the Wind, Bo Jest, and Stagecoach. They have a rich history of Indian or First Nations, and those are commemorated on many American issues. This is the mask issue. This is an issue commemorating Red Cloud. And they have a series that show uh, chief's bonnets or war bonnets. Again, the World's Fair is a big uh, deal, especially the New York one. And uh, I have seen license plates and other collectibles, but they also put out stamps uh, that commemorate the World's Fair. Uh, of course, the space achievements for the United States are big. And um, I'm just getting these together here. I have a first day cover commemorating the uh, space race and space achievements. This is the 1967 issue. The ones I've got here are uh, later issues, but this is commemorating some of the uh, Challenger and other uh, missions into space. This one as well, and this one as well. This is their uh, satellite system, and or actually this isn't, this is their Mercury Mariner that go, went into space to explore other planets. And this is a, one commemorating the Apollo-Soyuz space project between the U.S. and, and uh, Russia. Uh, this one is uh, the first anniversary, or the 100th anniversary, the first day cover, the balloon Jupiter, 1859 to 1959. And again, as I said, they commemorate their history a lot. This is Legends of the West. And it's just a partial cover, because as you can see, it's missing at the top. And also, they have stamps that commemorate uh, their entry into World War II, 1943. What's interesting is this actually has a map of the uh, area of battles. Now, I showed a post um, a airmail stamp earlier. The very first issue of airmail in the United States was the Jenny. And what's interesting about the Curtis Jenny is this is a first day cover, and it's a facsimile, of course. As, as you can see, the plane is upside down, and it's called an inverted Jenny, and originals of these stamps are very valuable, so much so that they've made this gold replica first day issue unaddressed. And that first airmail stamp was issued in 1918. Uh, the airmail stamps come in uh, many forms. And they're called back of the book because if you get a specialized United States catalog, airmail stamps are depicted at the back of the book along with fiscals and postage dues and whatnot. And these are again a five cent and a um, six cent airmail stamp. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, special delivery stamps were first issued in 1885. These are later issues, but what's interesting is they show special delivery being mailed by motorcycles. I don't know if you can see that clearly, but they're fellows that are delivering the mail with motorcycles for special delivery. 
I did mention postage dues, and I have three here. Postage dues were first issued in 1879, and they were issued because um, as stamps got more expensive and mailing got more expensive and things changed rather quickly, a lot of times people did not put sufficient postage on their uh, mail. So they were called back into the um, post offices and charged three or five cents in this case to make up the missing postage. Oftentimes it was the recipient who had to do that. This is a more uh, later um, issue. Also, the United States began stamped envelopes or postal envelopes. This is a little amalgamation here. They were first issued in 1853, and this is quite thin because it was kind of on like a letter paper. Um, this is a little heavier because it was probably on, again, a, a heavier card. And then these were on postcards, and as you can see, they're quite heavy. These ones came off of postal envelopes posted by the United States. And I don't know if you can see, but on the back, you can see that the image is actually partially embossed into the paper. Now, the, one other interesting thing about the United States is that they also had things called documentary stamps. And I'm just going to put this book in here so you can see this, some of my collection. These are um, postage dues. And you can see one here. It says E13-1920. That is the catalog number at the back of the book, and that is the mint issue value that was given at the time. This collection is not original to me. I got it from an auction, so a lot of these will have been valued by the person that owned it before. These are all postage due. Now here they have a postal note set. And that I'm not entirely sure what the function of that is. But postage dues, even early, could be quite high. This one's a one dollar. And I believe there are higher denominations than that. Now the one thing I wanted to share also is some of the back of books are these stock transfer and documentary stamps. A lot of people collect these because they're so interesting. Here is a really early war debt stamp. And it's not in the best of condition, but I've kept it because it's uh, of the interest value. A lot of times these um, uh, documentary stamps were perforated with the initials or information from the issuing body. This one's interesting because it says series 8, 1953. So it gives you the date that the stamp was put out. Um, tobacco stamps, people collect just these, and they're really difficult co to collect because of the fact that they were on tobacco, and as you can see at the bottom here, it's a little off key because this has been married together with hinges by the previous owner, but it's early, Charles Foster on it, and uh, it's 1926 is the date, and so it's coveted because of how early it is. This is another tobacco stamp. And again, it's got stuff on the back. That's from where it was affixed to the package of tobacco. So these are difficult to collect because of that fact. There's uh, sales tax stamps. Again, this is a receipt for six cents on sales tax, and it's from the state of Ohio. The U.S. puts out a lot of those. Uh, playing card. A lot of people will collect just playing cards. What's interesting about this is, is it's got a really neat little post uh, or uh, cancellation. This is another playing card with a different cancellation. Uh, many times you will see uh, stock transfers that look like these ones. And uh, this is a, a two cent and a 20 cent. And it was the fee charged for transferring stock from uh, buyer to seller. Again, a different stock transfer tax. And these are, I find these very pretty. They're quite artistically done. Uh, another interesting thing about the United States is they have wine revenue. This is a $1.44, 1941. Uh, the wines uh, got into uh, a smaller uh, stamp again. This one's perforated and it says one fifth of a cent. Not too sure what would have been a tax on a wine for that, but anyways. Um, again, I mentioned a lot of these stamps that are on envelopes and cards. This is part of my collection. And uh, that's it for that book. 
Now, the U.S. also puts out in their stamps um, what we call Cinderella's. In other words, they're, they're not really stamps, but they go on mail. They're not used to, to pay for mail. This is their boys' town. There are uh, countless series of these. They were put out at Christmas, and they started quite early. This one's a 1950s boy town. So it tells you how early they were. And as they went up in, in error, a lot of times they got to be more decorative. And uh, uh, there again, there are people that just collect Boys Town or Cinderella stamps from the United States. Now the interesting thing about the United States is that it's not just a country unto itself. It has possessions or places that at one point it, it uh, held uh, governance over. This is uh, uh, when it took... Hawaii, and it says Unit, Hawaiian Statehood 1959. And this is a block of four. They look to be mint, but they're not. They have no gum. It's just commemorating when Hawaii was taken as a possession. And I have two stamps here showing Hawaii. This is a, a two cent, I think it's King Kamehameha. And this is a facsimile. Hawaii was uh, 1851 to 1890. Uh, was when U.S. possessed it, and they replaced Hawaiian stamps in 1900 when it became a U.S. territory. And in 1959, it officially became the 50th state. At one point, the Americas, uh, Americans, Americans occupied the Philippines. And I'm trying to see if I have any Philippines here. I don't think I do, no. Uh, then they also took Cuba at one point, 1899 to 1902, and I have some issues of Cuba stamps that um, are, were, were overprinted. These are American stamps that are overprinted with Cuba with a new denomination. Following that, U.S. possessed Puerto Rico, and these two issues are American stamps overprinted with Puerto Rico. At one point, uh, the Canal Zone became uh, under the jurisdiction of the United States uh, in uh, 1904 to 1979 while the Canal Zone was being built. And as you can see, these two issues are fairly, uh, that you, could, you, you know, you can find them from the United States without the overprint, but this was used in the Canal Zone when the United States uh, became the jurisdictional um, owner of, of Canal Zone. At, at one point, Panama got involved, and they became a joint issue. So this is Panama with a canal zone when it became a, a joint issue, and that happened between 1979 and 1999, actually before 1979, because in 1979 to 1999, it, it returned entirely to Panama, and you can see that in their stamps. They go from having the overprint to not having the overprint. Again, there are collectors of Canal Zone because of the United States um, affiliation. I mentioned that I, I didn't think I had a Philippine stamp, but I found one here. It became Commonwealth of U.S. in 1935, and then it declared its uh, independence July 4th, 1946, and became the Republic of the Philippines. And again, you will find Philippine stamps that are overprinted. The, the last thing I want to discuss about the... Um, the United States is the fact that they have a uh, office for the UN in New York. And this is the first UN issue from 1959 once the United Nations in New York was established. And you can get some really beautiful covers of the UN from the United States. This is a 1956 first day cover. It's addressed. It's the ladies down here in order. This is a 1959. United Nations cover, and again, you can see they're all postmarked from New York. This is 1960s United Nations commemorating the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. This is a human rights cover. This one is unaddressed, as is the prior one, and it's 1963. This is a 1965, and it's the 20th anniversary of the first day of issue of the very first stamp. So that's kind of interesting. These are unaddressed covers uh, for the United Nation. 
and they would eventually have had a stamp affixed to them in the address. You can see the age because the glue from the back, it's, it's, it's adhered to itself, has actually foxed through. Foxy means discoloration and discolored the front. They have some beautiful issues. This is one of my favorite, the Chagall uh, window, stained glass window. And again, this is 1967. And that's it for, for the UN. What's interesting about the UN is these two issues here are from the Geneva office. And again, they do have an American uh, uh, connection because you can get these issues or similar ones issued by the United States. So that's it for today. Until next time, keep on looking into and for stamps. Stamp Sleuth, signing off.